All right, Mr. Marco Rodriguez, very happy to talk to you today. Can you go ahead and start us out with who you are and who you serve? Yeah, cool. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for having me. Um, as you said, my name is Marco Rodriguez, and I'm a Google advertiser for e-commerce businesses. So I'm working pretty much exclusively with online stores, mostly on Shopify, but also other uh, store platforms. And uh, through Google Ads mainly, I'm generating more sales to them. It's uh, pretty straightforward. Awesome. Cool. Well, as we talked before, I want to keep these really concise and to the point, focusing on actionable tips and like questions that actually lead to people's next steps. So one question more about you before we jump into how you operate. How long have you actually been running this business? Um, I've been in e-commerce myself since 2015, started with my own store. And that was what I was focused on for the like first two years or so. And starting from 2016, 17, I got into consulting, ad management and stuff. And um, my focus on this sort of consulting and ad management side has been there since I would say probably 2018 or something. That's where things really sort of took off, I, I'd say. Yeah. So four years now. Yeah. Nice. We, we started in business the same year. It's crazy. Seven years. Like, nice. That's a, that's a, that's a lot. Like, cool. Yeah. Sick. Almost a decade. Yeah. doesn't feel that long, actually. <laughs> no, it, it goes by so fast. Well, very cool. So back yeah. when you first started offering the management side of things, what did you do to get your first clients? Because obviously the first couple can be the most difficult. You don't have necessarily the case studies or credibility. So what were some of the things that helped you score those first two, three deals? Yeah, actually the very first deal, it's probably something that cannot really be repeated because it was literally a person that I knew and uh, the person sort of uh, realized that I was doing sort of e-commerce and then they uh, the person reached out to me and I was um, sort of helping the person with uh, his store and also with his ads. Um, the first sort of more ongoing clients that I got was actually through like forums. Like I was posting in forums nice. um, where I was just helping people out, like probably the first hundred comments or so I was just giving feedback and helping people out. And then eventually people reached out to me for, for help too. Um, that's how I got a couple like very low ticket clients and the real clients, the bigger ones, the ones that I'm, you know, partly working with for two years plus now, most of these um, really came when I started with the whole YouTube game. That's where most of them come from. What forms were you posting on? I'm curious if you were on some of the same ones. Um, I think I'm definitely not using them anymore. I think one of them was called Warrior Forum or Warrior Forum. That's what I was wondering. I used to live yeah? on there back in 2015, 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It was like this this big marketing. I'm not even sure if they are still sort of big or if there's still a lot of stuff going on but it's basically there, right? I don't know if anybody's using it though yeah like back then it was definitely i think the number one in terms of marketing now i think it's probably just i don't know reddit or quora or something where people ask questions but um that there i got like a handful of like very low ticket clients yeah for example and then there were probably one or two more that i have no idea what the name was again but i, I guess you can like do some google stuff and then find some forums as well <clears throat> yeah, that's interesting. I mean, the same strategy of strategically giving value to people who may buy from you. It's the same thing as going to a Facebook group and answering people's questions. They're like, what you're doing now with YouTube, you make free information to build trust to then sell somebody. So transitioning to your personal brand, yeah. obviously, that seems to have been a big part of your success. Do you think that you would be where you are at right now without that personal brand? Has it been a massive part of getting to where you are now or just an accessory? Definitely a massive part of it. I mean, I've never been super focused on the personal brand in the sense that I was doing like vlogs or talking much about myself. Like if you check my YouTube channel where I have like around 200 videos or so, almost all of them are very technical, very sort of much focused on methods and strategies and things like that. And I'm talking very, very little about myself. So in that regard, I'm probably not a prime example of a personal brand, but I mean, it's inevitable when you watch someone on YouTube like myself, that sooner or later, of course, you are familiar with the person a little bit as well. And since to this day, most of my clients came from YouTube, I would say it played like a huge role for sure. Like definitely. That's awesome. And it's crazy because like your channel is not even really that big. You're at 20,000 subscribers? Yeah, like 17, 17 and a half or something. Yeah. But didn't post anything for like half a year. I, I really have to restart that as well. <laughs> I, I'm amazed how many people I meet on YouTube who have similar size channels, even like two or 3,000 subscribers and just crush it. I mean, even myself, I have 650 
I get a call to two calls per week from YouTube. It's just, yeah, it's crazy the, the engagement on there. I think that you know, if you, it's such a good channel because like even when I don't post, I still get calls from YouTube. Or if I don't send out like outbound prospecting, it stops. Which obviously outbound prospecting yep. is much more you can you can predict it much better. But having a passive meeting stream is is a huge asset, and also it just gives you that you're an authority figure. You know, you're on YouTube. You know, that, that, that instantly right. gives you a lot of credibility and I'm sure it's good at networking as well. Yeah, definitely. And as you said, like this passive stream is great. I mean, I, as I said, I've been, I um, haven't been posting on YouTube for like six months now and up to like a couple of weeks ago, I was still getting very predictable sort of meeting bookings and occasional course sales and things like that. Now I kind of noticed how it declined because I guess that pause was just too long. I have some videos in the pipeline now. I definitely want to restart this whole thing. Um, but for months and months and months on end, without posting anything, I was getting several meetings a week as well, um, or at least like inquiries that turned into meetings and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it's huge and I highly recommend it. It doesn't have to be YouTube, could be LinkedIn, Quora, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, but it, it makes a lot of sense. Sure. Yeah. And at what point in your YouTube journey did you decide to add on the info product in addition to the agency? Pretty late, I think, in, in um, comparison. Like I started YouTube, I think, in October, November 2016, and I added my course like a year later. Um, up to that point, up to that point, I didn't really think about it because I was just doing some consulting stuff, not even full-scale ad management back then, just like hourly consulting. And then at some point I realized, okay, let me do a course. Actually, in the beginning it was like very cheap, just like I think 97 bucks or something. Then I added more stuff onto it. And um, the course has never been my main thing. Like I didn't want to be like a course seller, but primarily like a consultant and ad manager. But it was definitely a nice thing to have sort of um, on the side. Uh, so... Yeah, a year after launch, I actually decided to do that. Nice, that's cool. And one of my favorite things about YouTube is it's the only place that pays you to promote. Because also I know the CPMs in the business niche are quite good. Like you're monetized on YouTube, yeah. right? Yeah. Can I ask what like the best month you had was just purely from YouTube revenue? Yeah, it wasn't that huge, um, but it was like a couple hundred euros, like uh, probably between five to seven hundred dollars or something. So I had very, really I had very good. few. Yeah, con considering it's like, um, I I'm not getting too many views, like the average video probably has a couple of hundred, sometimes a couple of thousand. Um, considering that, it was actually a pretty decent amount that, um, you know, it's just nice to have on the site. So that's quite good. Yeah, you're, it covers your editing expenses, you have an editor, and also you're getting paid to advertise your business, which is pretty cool. So um, yeah, yeah, well, thanks for sharing a bit about your personal brand. One, one thing I like to talk about with people is client retention, because... Obviously, the best agencies are the ones that can retain clients for a long period of time and take them through multiple billing cycles. Because if you're always getting new clients and dropping them, it's just not sustainable. So with that in mind, do you have any key takeaways for keeping client retention high in your agency? Yeah, like the first thing is vetting clients properly. Like don't even start with someone where you think you were probably just going to do it for one month. I mean, there are cases where after a month you realize, Hey, it just doesn't work and it, it's it's not working in my case like ads management google ads for e-commerce businesses there are always cases where you get started and then you realize hey this product is actually very very difficult to advertise for a bunch of reasons that you only see when you start um but nonetheless i highly recommend vetting clients i recommend to not just get someone because uh you see the dollar amount of the first retainer and then uh, once you start you realize hey it's just not working like it's definitely not worth the the, the headaches and the issues and the client is not happy and, and you're not happy. So first thing is vetting. Um, the set, second thing is setting realistic expectations for sure. Like I know that there are a lot of agencies that promise clients the world like, hey, yes, we can triple, quadruple your revenue in the first month. And then they are super excited, of course, and then it doesn't work. And this all makes it very difficult as well. In terms of during the work, um, I would say one of the most important things is sort of communication that is very, that should be very on point. I had my issues with that in the past as well. I have to be honest, like I had cases where I probably had two or three too many clients and um, sort of the communication sort of partly suffered. I mean, there are those clients who expect you to answer questions two hours after, after they ask them, which of course doesn't work, but it also shouldn't take like several days in, in, in normal cases. So I found that besides the whole thing, besides the whole performance aspect, which of course 
you know, has to be on point in, in order to, for the client, uh, for this to make sense in the first place. Communication is very uh, important. So having like some standardized uh, channels, Slack or whatever that you can uh, reply reasonably fast without sort of, of course, being there 24 seven, but this really helps with keeping clients happy and increasing retention. Um, my longest clients I'm working with for like, as I said, two, two and a half years now, at some point that it's like very easy, right? Like with these guys, I probably communicate once <clears throat> every one or two months and it's just all going smoothly. But especially in the beginning, you have to give the client the feeling like, hey, okay, sure. I can count on that person and, you know, they, uh, I can um, reach them quickly and things like that. That's, I think, really, really key. That, that makes sense. And client communication is something I struggle with because my agency grew from little to like 50 clients at one point. And what I ended up having to <laughs> yes. do was I, um, I have a virtual assistant of mine in every client channel who she takes the responses and adds them to like almost like a CRM dashboard for people I need to respond to. That way I don't have to mm -hmm. look in the channels all the time and I can go through and see the questions and it has automatic reminders based on when somebody put the, my VA put the question there. So like, Michael, it's been 24 hours. You need to answer them. Michael, it's been 40 right. hours. You need to answer them. <laughs> 72 hours. Yep. And then after 72 hours, I have daily reminders. So I've even helped myself by, well, I also have hired somebody who helps with answering, but even set up like a whole CRM system just to get faster client communication because I saw that was one of my weaknesses. So I might be a bit overboard on systems, but you're definitely, <laughs> definitely right there. Yeah, but I really like that. I mean, um, are you purely doing Slack with all your clients or are there Only also other? Slack. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's huge. That's something that I definitely have to improve because I have email, I have Skype, I have Slack, I have mm -hmm. WhatsApp, you know, and I have several clients on each of those channels. So it's very easy to, at some point, let something slip through sort of, of course, unintentionally. And then like four days later, you get the email follow up, like, Hey, what's going on, man. But you had all these different channels. And I'm also really trying to streamline this now on like just one or two platforms max ideally. Um, but I think Slack is great for that to keep all things in one place and your system yeah. sounds pretty good actually. Yeah. And the automations in Slack are amazing. I mean, we have so many automations that ping clients in Slack. And yeah, it's it's really good. It's a pain to move there, but once you're there, it's great. And like my my clients know that I don't answer outside of Slack. Like, I, and it's not that like I intentionally don't like. I don't look at my WhatsApp, and I don't look mm -hmm. at like my Instagram DMs unless I like personally feel like it. But on Slack, I'm on it Monday to Friday, so it's it's good to have that separation too. All mm -hmm. right. Well, yeah. One one final question about your agency I want to share is what is your ultimate goal with it? So is the goal to build it into this massive company, hundreds of employees? Do you want to exit it and then do something different? Do you want to make it passive by hiring a CEO? Do you want to keep running it as is? Like, what is the goal? Uh, yeah, that's a very good question. Um, so I definitely don't want to exit it. Um, I don't really sort of like that part too much. Uh, I definitely want to keep running ads myself as well. But what I probably can imagine very well sort of in the mid future is to focus on like just some selected clients and have other clients done by uh, people that I work with. So for example, currently, I, I told you before, I'm, I'm, I'm training my brother to help me out as well. But of course, he, he won't sort of take over like the biggest clients that I work with, but rather help me with some of the smaller ones. And I will sort of continue to work on them as long as I feel like he's absolutely ready to, to do it very, very well. Um, I want to build a team. Yes, for sure. I probably have waited way too long for that, considering, you know, I've been doing this for years, but I've never really, I've never really grown to the point where this makes a lot of sense. And I barely use paid advertising or anything like that. So um, my goal is definitely to build a team. Um, at the same time, every now and then I have other side projects like launching a new e-commerce business myself again, because I'm so close to that industry and I sort of love building e-commerce stores and, you know, getting that Shopify sales notification on your phone when something gets sold and stuff like that. It's still the best feeling in the end. Um, so mixing these things together. I think is, is what I really want to want to go for, but still taking like a crucial role in the agency. I do want to sort of focus more on conversion optimization as well. So my main thing, 95% plus is, is Google ads for e-commerce. But I noticed that I um, was able to help a few of my clients very, very well in terms of optimizing their store conversion rates and getting higher AOV, more sales, et cetera. And that's really something that I want to do more of. 
probably hiring someone who's a developer who can help with some technical things while I'm doing like the the, the strategy and the sort of design and the layout and the copy and stuff like that. That's really something that I want to do. So becoming like this um, Google Ads plus CRO combination um, for Shopify stores primarily over the next like year or two, maybe. That's, I think, what I would do. Nice. That sounds interesting. I'm always curious what people want to do for agencies. Like for myself, eventually I do want to exit. I meet some who want, hmm. you know, massive corporations. Uh, it, it's just interesting to hear because you can do so many things of it. Well, that was the last Definitely. agency specific question I had for you. Uh, last thing I want to ask is where can somebody listening to this go to learn more about you or connect with you? Yeah, sure. Um, my YouTube channel, Marco Rodriguez, the Ecom Project. Um, hopefully with some more videos <laughs> over the next weeks again, but there is plenty you can watch. So if you haven't seen this channel, well, at least you have 200 videos to go through if you'd like. Um, cartlift.co, so C-A-R-T-L-I-F-T.co is uh, my new sort of agency site. I have a bunch of sites, you know, Mark Rodriguez, CEO and so on and so forth, but this is like the newest one um, that I will focus on. So these two, I would say, and Instagram, Mar at Marco Ecom, if someone wants to message me, has a question or whatever, these three things. Awesome. I'll tag those in the description. Marco, thanks for talking today. Cool. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Take care, Michael.